Let's talk about Disney Wars. Don't you sigh at me. I know. I know. But for the five of you who still care about Disney Wars out there, Star Wars had its uh, Star Wars celebration thing just the other day, where a couple of interesting things were announced, including Pregnant Ray. <laughs> oh, good. Fantastic. Immaculate conception at the top of everything else. Why not? She's Mary Sued literally every other power in the book, so popping out Jesus is frankly just an encore at this point. But funny though that might be. <laughs> We're going to talk more about their um, the new show. Yes, yet another a new Star Wars show because we don't really know enough about the movie to really speculate too much at this point, but the Acolytes is their upcoming show, headed by Leslie Headland, Harvey Weinstein's biggest fan and previous personal assistant. <laughs> well, I mean, she certainly has experience with getting the best out of her female talent, so that's a good start. Ah, <laughs> uh, this, um, this was in the before times, before the whole... You know, jerking off into potted plants thing. Sexual deviancies aside, however, the Acolyte is apparently set in the later part of the High Republic, just before the introduction of George Lucas's prequel movies, which, oh boy. See, part of me, because one of the things uh, she says, the creator here, is that this will be a story told from the perspective of the villains, which, you know what, is actually sort of kind of pseudo-interesting. Because alright, the Republic is going through some pretty drastic changes, and will eventually end up, of course, with Palpatine and his head, and with the Jedi Council being less than entirely upstanding, shall we say. So how did all this whole transformation, you know, happen? What were the Sith doing in the meantime? Hiding, scurrying around, etc, etc. But I just don't have any faith in that being executed properly. In fact, all I see is a large white woman with a very, very large shovel walking over behind the scenes and going, don't mind me and my shovel, just here to undermine something. <laughs> oh, by God. Just... <sighs> by Allah's ass hairs. I cannot believe you're worried about undermining the prequels now. And yet here we are. And... Once again, I every time I'm like, hey, it could be good. It probably won't be. So she has a little bit of an emotional moment here, which I'll show you. Star Wars saved my life. Like, like, I know that we... And man, I, I could just look at that and be like, okay, she actually gives a shit. Interesting. Maybe this will be good. And hey, maybe it will be, but I am far too old and cynical at this point, because you know what? When I see this, well, actually, allow me to present to you the devil herself, who explains perfectly why I have such misgivings over this. But the second question is, what do you have to say? What are you trying to say in your storytelling? What's important to you? I often find that I'm sitting, I'm talking to people about things that really personally affected them and they bring that to the character and to the stories. This is probably, in my opinion, the biggest problem right here. As rude as it may be, because I don't know these people's backstories, etc., I frankly could not care less about the emotional struggles of some Disney screenwriter. I am sick and tired of being told some rando's life story with the vehicle of Star Wars. I want a Star Wars story. Now, of course, you can use your own experiences to inform your creating ones, obviously. I do so every day with every law video I make. I take my experiences with the universe and my fetish for logistics and weave the story in my way. But that is also the point right there. I still do the story, I simply add to it. But with stuff like Obi-Wan Kenobi, for example, we get a story that has dick and balls to do with Obi-Wan Kenobi. We get an entirely new character. 
We know Obi-Wan Kenobi went to Tatooine to look over Luke as a long plan. Literally, they were playing the long game to raise up Luke as the chosen one. He hadn't given up. He hadn't surrendered. This was merely, literally, the long view of the plan. That is why, in the originals, when he is de facto killed by Darth Vader, he doesn't fight back as he is, yep, that's it. I, it. It doesn't matter. I've already won. Screw you. And then just simply passes on. But in the prequels, prequels, no, <laughs> can we call them a prequel? In the Obi-Wan Kenobi disaster, Kenobi is a soulless husk who has given up on everything, who is simply a, a shade living a life, a defeated, miserable man that has to be saved by Leia Organa, the child actor of all things. And Luke? Well, he's over there somewhere. Yeah, he's not very important, frankly. And it's entirely okay for Obi-Wan to actually <laughs> knowingly endanger him. <laughs> I, and okay, right. let's also take a bit of a broader perspective here as well, because most of these various videos being uploaded received dick all attention. I get more views than this almost 4 million subscribers channel on some of this godless content, which shows you how interested people are. But we get some of the people from the Acolyte as well, including some rather interesting ones like, you know, Super fan. Super fan. <laughs> I do. I do remember the Lord of the Rings super fans. <laughs> oh, you, you know the, the the Rings of Power ones, the ones that were just enormous fans of Lord of the Rings and Tolkien just you know, couldn't wait to get their their little eyeballs on the first episode. They were like, "Wow, this will be amazing." We never heard from any of them ever again. Oh <laughs> yeah, because. Most of the time, these actors are simply being what they are paid to be. Fake-ass actors. PR posters. But there is one interesting part here. Mm. I mean, the best parts about Star Wars is there is no good or evil. It depends on what side you're standing on, truly. You know what I mean? That you can look at any angle and see yourself relayed through all the characters. Darth to Luke. You know what I'm saying? No good or evil. This is one of those lines that sound good, and again, PR poster, but it simply isn't true. Star Wars is very much so a universe with good and evil. George Lucas himself has gone on multiple, admittedly ever-changing, rants on this subject. But the original movie were absolutely about good triumphing over evil. And Darth Vader, as you mentioned here too, is not evil. The Emperor was evil. Vader, or Anakin, was a corrupted hero who had his emotions manipulated and used by evil. Palpatine. Now you can certainly argue semantics, like how Palpatine was uh, building the Death Stars to fight against the Uzang Bong, or whatever silly name they have, etc. And you can go into minutia and go like, was this really evil? Is order actually evil? Blah 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 blah. But at the end of the day, the original Star Wars stories were very much so a fairly classical tale of good triumphing over evil. And if we have arrived at that point already with the end of the Republic, Again, it could be interesting debating the ethics and the morality of the Jedi Council via vis-a-vis -vis the Sith, but again, I am not at all convinced that that is actually going to be conductive to a good Star Wars story. And this is also then further reinforced by the fact that they keep talking about how, oh, they're, they're totally taking the universe super duper seriously, trust me, bruh, and then always following it up with, oh, but then our creative input, totally new and fresh, etc, etc. And I don't know if I want anything new at this point. Star Wars is nothing but new, it seems. The Mandalorian. They are rebuilding their empire now. Boba Fett is riding a Vesper and being a side character in his own show. Andor is doing something I couldn't care less about over there. In fact, I'd care more about the set dressings than I do the story of actual Andor. And Obi-Wan... I don't want new Star Wars. I want just actual Star Wars, of course, because here's the thing as well. New? Oh, it sounds good, but what they mean with new is the same shit in a new wrapping. 
I'll let the cast demonstrate that one for me. So my character, you know, she's a she's a powerful leader. She's a powerful leader. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, in a very woman-centered world, which I I was very excited to kind of be that because I feel like Star Wars is is very like patriarchal. So it was kind of cool to have like this sort of woman-centered figure. Strong female main character. Check. Woman leader, check. Star Wars is patriarchal, check, check. Like a breath of stale dead air, exhaled by a rotten whale carcass on a hot summer's day. And yet again, we find ourselves not in a galaxy far, far away, swinging around laser swords at one another, but rather mired up to our collective ball sacks in the unending swamp of current year bullshit. Because the more thing changes with Disney Wars, the more things stay exactly the same. We have explored so much of the things that have, well, nothing to do with the main storyline of Star Wars at this point, that it itself is some distant god-awful memory. <laughs> Nor am I arguing that they should revisit and remaster them, mind you. <laughs> because that would probably be as bad if not worse, but... <sighs> this is actually why I kind of liked the Star Wars Visions things, and I'm sort of pseudo-interested in seeing what they're going to do with Season 2 of it. Because at least those were small, self-contained, most of the time, stories that had a quick point that it wanted to get across. And it was simply just goddamn Star Wars stories. It didn't talk about the mental health issues of its creator. It didn't need to worry itself about modern day bullshit, or whether or not Star Wars was political. No, there was a little furry thing who was friends with a Japanese lady who totally wanted to be on Rubru, but thought that the Imperium was pretty good for her planet and so had a falling out with her dad. And now the furry needs to reconcile the two parties somehow. Okay, degenerate, but simple, and I can enjoy simple. There's some laser blasts going back and forth, some pew pew pew, some sword fighting here and there. Awesome. That, honestly, is all I want these days. I I catch myself having more interest in the background stupidity of current day Star Wars than I do about the actual story and the characters. I look at the Mandalorian and I see the bureaucracy of the Republic and how they treat the, um, the reintegration of old Imperial officers and I think to myself, okay, that's interesting, tell me more about that. And then it shifts off to the Mandalorians rebuilding the Mandalorian Empire with Womex in power again and I fall asleep yet again. I am genuinely more interested in paperwork at this point than I am the fate of the main characters. And when that's true, you know something has gone awfully wrong. Because the universe of Star Wars is still interesting, but what Disney is doing with it is first grade snooze material, and somehow I doubt this is going to change that. But. I guess as always, we're gonna have to wait and see, and then complain when the time arrives. What do you guys think? Anybody excited for what Star Wars has planned here? Anyone excited for Ahsoka? <laughs> oh, I am, I am, I am, I am dreading that one, but, um, uh, hmm. Hey, at least Disney keeps making all of their slave <laughs> slave races be played by black people. <laughs> Maybe there's hope after all. Ah, <laughs> oh, Disney. Bit of a... Bit, bit, bit of a mixed message there. Till next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching. And I hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.